All right, the program is still your weekend, and I'm still Cecil. We just, bef just before that uh, feature, we had a guest from the Lions Club International. They told us about the humanitarian efforts they have been having, quite notable, quite uh, laudable. Now, there is another guest with me in the studio who is doing as well. She's doing some humanitarian efforts in Nigeria. She's been in Nigeria for some time. She's a Nigerian in the diaspora and felt that, oh, she should come back home and see how she can give back to her home country. All right, I wouldn't want to talk too much and unwrap so much about her. She's going to do that <laughs> herself. Help me in welcoming Dr. She's a Dane. She has so many titles, so many accolades to her credit. Well, let me just stick with Dr. Chetachi Ecton of the founder of the When in Need Foundation. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. When in Need Foundation, is it uh, just in Nigeria or um, is it international, right? It's an international organization, yes. Yes, it's an international organization. It's a 501c3. I yeah. mean, it's registered in the United States and uh -huh. it's also registered here in Nigeria. Oh, okay, wow. Um, when in Need Foundation, it's been in Nigeria for how long now? Has been in Nigeria for, let me say, about 12 years. 12 years? Yes, about 12 years, yes. Wow. And wow. We, we, we started off small, um, you know, because at that particular time, I didn't have enough, you know, and I didn't know how to, you know, look for some funding. So I decided to do what I can do with the little money that I have. And my children even contributed their allowances. So we started mm. small, though, and we started by paying school tuitions, mm. buying school supplies, and making sure that, you know, the needy children have what they needed to go to school. So that's how we started. Wow. Okay. You know, uh, for many Nigerians in the diaspora who have sp I've seen, I've spoken to, who have read about, many don't want to come back home. They believe uh, things are not in the proper shape back home. The roads are bad. The light is bad. They cannot come back home. And uh, you came back home after almost uh, more than uh, 40, 40 years. 40 years. You are back home, which is unlike, which is unusual. Why did you come back home to do this? I mean, you could have established yourself there and moved on. Well, to, you know, I have, I have already established myself there. Mm -hmm. But I decided to come home because there is so much to do at home. Listen, all of us cannot run away from home. We cannot say that we cannot stay in, Niger in overseas and then blame Nigeria for not having good roads, not having this, not having that, without putting any effort, you know, in making sure that whatever it is that we feel that Nigeria lacks, that we can actually help establish that. Mm. So right. that's why I came back. I came back to see what little good that I can do. I know that I'm only one person, but one person can do yeah. not a small thing, but a big thing okay. in a way. All right. Um, what are some of the projects um, the One in Need Foundation is involved in? I know of the medical. What are some of the projects you One in Need have done? The, we do the medical missions. Okay. We have a huge agricultural program going on right now. Okay. In fact, uh, we're looking at feeding about 10 million Nigerians by the ending of this year. That is with our agricultural program. We did it in the north and we did it in the east. And um, not only that, we do educational. Um, we make sure that we do give school fundings. Mm. We give scholarships. And as a matter of fact, we're building one we're building a school in, in, in the East. It's going to be a very beautiful school, international school. And you know what it is, what they say about education. Education is power, it's knowledge. Right now, we cannot blame about the people that are in government. We can't blame about the people that are overseas. We can't blame about the people that are here that are not doing much. But we have to look at what we're going to do. And for me, catching children when they are young is actually that the meaning of the children are the leaders leader of tomorrow. tomorrow. Oh, um, okay, let's just take this very briefly and quickly. You are into medical. What are some of the places you've gone? How much have you affected people? What are some of the medical supplies you give to those people? Oh my God, I can't begin to tell you, but I can tell you that over one million of individuals have benefited from our medical missions so far. and other missions that we're doing, yes. Over one million, yes. Okay, you give them uh, medications? And we do medical mission. We give them, uh, we do examinations and then we give them medicines to last them up to maybe from two weeks to three months. Wow. And sometimes we, if they're critical, 
we pay for their medical needs. Wow. If they have surgery, we pay for their surgery. So we do all that. And as I said, um, I have I have St. George, other of St. George, um, which I'm a member of as a dame. Um, they have helped with some medical supplies. But most of the things, about maybe 90% of everything I do or 95% of everything I do comes out from my earnings. So that means that no matter what I do, I have to work. I have to work real hard. And everything I get goes back to the mission. All right, you aim to feed millions. And that is quite an ambitious number, I must yes. say. So how, have, how does the feeding program work? Okay, we're looking at it. At, for example, if we come into a community, a community of about, let's say, about um, three million, and we calculate that. And what we'll do is that we'll buy the seedlings. Ah. So when we buy the seedlings, we already know the population of the community. So we buy, the, we buy the seedlings, and we do calculate, okay, if we give one person uh, maybe a bag of rice to plant, how many people can that bag of rice feed? Mm. So that's how we come up with the population, and that's how we come up with the numbers. And we have done so many of these. You know, we did it this year. We, we distributed so many bags of rice. I can't begin to tell you how many. If I tell you that we distributed more than maybe 1,000 bags of rice, wow. um, I don't know how many bags of beans that we distributed, okra, um, peppers, you know, seeds to help us feed, especially now that we have the COVID-19 and a lot mm. of people are not farming. So when people are not farming, when they don't have money to buy the seedlings to, to, to farm, that's where we come in. We don't give them money. We give them the seedlings to, pla to, to plant so that they can feed themselves mm -hmm. and be able to feed their neighbors and be able to sell and empower themselves and maybe use the money for medical bills or maybe use the money to pay for school tuition when the school reopens. Dr. Chetachi, I really admire what you do and um, it's not easy doing this alone. Are, there, are you looking forward to partnering with individuals, groups around government maybe? To be honest with you, yes. I would love to do that. But um, right now, um, okay with what I'm doing. You know, when you do partner with some people, um, they do, they might deviate some of the money to other things. Mm. And then they may have to ask a lot of questions that has nothing to do with your mission or what you mm. are about to do. Uh, you might partner with people who would want to sabotage what you're doing. True. So that is why I prefer to do the things I do by myself. Because now I hold myself accountable for what I do. I make sure that if it's a penny, it goes exactly where it's supposed to go. Mm. If it's 10 naira, it goes exactly where it's supposed to go. So that I don't give anybody 10 naira to go and do this. And then the person ends up doing only 20% yeah. of that. Okay, okay. Well, uh, that's, uh, that's actually a fact, and uh, it's good to f say the fact that you hold yourself accountable to everything you do. You've just ended up your outreach activities for the year. What does next year promise? Next year has a lot of promise. Um, I'm going to go back. Um, my children have been working so hard, and the foundation has been working so hard. I will go back and work so hard myself so that when I return, uh, my school may be finished by then is a school that will hold about 650 students mm. and we're also going to start our secondary school and university very soon um i will still continue to do the agriculture let me tell you something i know I we're short of time but let me tell you something about agriculture you see that here in Nigeria, we're used to planting one season. Rainy season, everybody's running to plant. But there are, there's a, there are a whole lot of technology out there that can help us plant every two months or every three months, which, of course, I have done it. I tested it out uh, in my house, and it worked. I tested it out in my farms, and they worked. Right now, we're actually on the, fourth fam the fifth farming of the year. So just imagine if Nigerians can farm four or five times a year we cannot be, we can never be discussed or will be scarce of food. We'll have a lot of food to feed Nigeria and more. We will if, even have enough to export so that Nigeria economy can also grow, so that families can also grow. You know, and I'm also trying to teach individuals how they can plant at home. Listen, even if you don't have a farmland, you can still farm to feed your, yourselves. 
that I'm trying to teach people. All right, I will thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for coming around. I see that we can actually, I guess we can get more of your information on our website. Yes. All right, uh, which is www.winfound.org. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Chetachi Ecton, for coming around. We wish you good luck. Thank All you. All right, so wish you better years ahead. And, um, you know, as you help those in need, may you also find help. Thank you.